Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the VAU Mic Check. And, oh, yes, I really did sound like a car salesman just then. That or something else. Anyway, tonight we are doing character copy. And this is what I'm going to say. On the first read-through, just be you. Just read it normal. Don't try anything in particular. And then as you're reading through it, kind of think about the kind of character that you want to develop for it. That kind of personality that, that this particular cool scientist character has. And then give us your best, what that character is. So, with that, who is going first? One second. Okay, I think Golda just <laughs> volunteered. <laughs> I learned that trick last week, Golda. Mm -mm. <laughs> okay. She said, yes, yes, I will. Okay, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, this time, just be me. Yeah. All right, and moving towards the mic won't do anything because it's up there. Got it. Um, ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosity of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in human while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf, turf with it. While we've officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like most common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the Octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Cap Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Uh, next up is Dan. Did you say Dan? Yeah. I said, Dan. <laughs> You're on the spot, oh, Dan. <laughs> so they're lycanthropes. Okay. <laughs> not, not quite, but. <laughs> ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. Uh, can I stop you for a second? Yeah, go ahead. Are you using an accent? No. No? Okay, no. just reading as you? Yeah, no. I'm just reading it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm using a voice, I guess I'm... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we yeah we're going to start out reading. I, I, I think you may have stepped out. I didn't see you step out. <laughs> so, well, we we're going to start reading just in our signature voice and then go uh, go with the character on our next read. Okay, so no accent. Yeah, just okay. get a feel for the character first. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. Mm. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink while in humanoid form. Mm. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, the hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells, us that, mm, science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or, in this case, the octarians. 
but octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zap. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Shane. Sorry, they both got me here. Hang on. Ah, here we go. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we've officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Uh, tag. Hang on. <laughs> I'm doing this on my phone so I can't see who's who. Uh, Richard. Unmute, Richard, yeah. There we go. Yes, no, my fan was running, and I didn't think you guys needed to hear the fan. It gets really warm in here this summer. <laughs> <clears throat> Gotta love summer. Yeah. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to convert turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen from the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. <laughs> there was a nice rendition. All right, Alan, I think it's your turn today. Okay. Will do. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid, squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer just to call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, 
they may just take back that zapfish. Uh, who's left? Michael, you haven't gone. I have not. All right. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians, but octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain, Cud With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just make... With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. See, he's not gone. Well, Joe, you yeah. just unmuted, so... <laughs> we'll, we'll say you volunteered yourself and we'll leave the... Uh, now we'll leave uh, Nathan to go after you. Okay. Ah, hello there. How are you? Uh, we here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful. As it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid, in fact, can transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. Uh, while we've officially named this breed of squid the inkling, uh, we prefer to call them just squids. Like the more common squid, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Cap'n Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Okay. Nathan? Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of, while we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer just to call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Yeah, one thing I definitely noticed during everyone's read is that one or two of you guys, I think Richard and Joe, have a particular natural delivery that sounds perfect for this without any added anything onto it. We'll see how that works. Let me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that works. I am, I am a scientist, after all. <laughs> I'm something uh, of a scientist myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a geek. <laughs> I carry the label television engineer, okay? I know, know nothing about octopus. <laughs> or squids. Aside from the fact that they make good bait. 
there's one thing I've like noticed Japanese about food like I do they taste good <laughs> so, <laughs> what was that Dan there's something I noticed about the copy the last two paragraphs it seems like they use the first sentence of this last paragraph should be in the at the end of the third paragraph because it's it's like sep it's separated the entire script is separated by what it's telling you and for some reason though their hair like tentacles seem to change color in combat situations i think that should be moved up to the like more common squids they can alter their appearance i don't know That's just yeah the that the final it. yeah i agree that the final um paragraph should start with science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis yeah yeah, yeah. mm-hmm Another thing that I noticed is uh, there were some people tripping up over the second sentence in the second paragraph. In squid form, they can dive into and become one of one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. Well, um, I think yeah. the thing that really throws it off is the uh, ellipses after in humanoid form. Yeah. It was the comma after ink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so... I changed um, it to a period from my copy, though, so... <laughs> And I was going to say, if, if we were going to go ahead and like block that off, we we're going to use brackets to close it off. Um, the, the first idea would be in squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. That would be one idea. And yep. then while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. That would be the other idea to bracket off. Yeah. So that was just one thing that I noticed that that particular area there was kind of a stumbling block for some people. All right. It was not supposed uh, to have no ellipses. Here's well, the thing is, is, is that is, um, is this, this looks like it's written specifically for a visual commercial as well. Yeah. So, yeah. um, in the background, um, it would probably show while in humanoid form, then it would, cause this is for the, uh, uh, wow, what's, what's the, what's the name of that game? It's Nintendo, um, Splatoon. That's right. This is for the game Splatoon. Ugh. And uh, it would show gameplay of, of that in the background of because of, the whole point of the game is basically to cover as much turf and ink as possible. So yeah. it would probably zoom out while it says while in human form and show them, you know, like spraying ink everywhere and trying to cover as much ground as possible. So this definitely has um, visuals going on in the background, which is something that needs to be uh, remembered as well for the delivery. That's my yeah. edited copy right there. I just linked it. Um, let's see. yeah, I had to separate the two, uh, points on the second paragraph for myself. I don't know if it helps everybody else too. Yeah. Thing is when you're marking up copy, um, if you get this, like, not in the format that we usually give it in where you can uh, play with it like that, but oh, uh, <laughs> you know, I um, have parentheses. <laughs> you, you have to kind of make adjustments and say, okay, let's group this together with this. And um, how is it that Nancy puts it clumping something like so that? What are your thoughts about the character? I see uh, Jurassic Park, you know, the, the ride where um, <coughs> Mr. Talking DNA is talking to himself. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, John Hammond is talking to himself. We spared no expense. We spared no expense. Well, I, I think there needs to be uh, definitely some interest generated with the character, a little bit more excitement that was shown than was shown in, in some of the other reads here, because this is sort of uh, the, the game itself is sort of built to, uh, <coughs> young kids to early yeah. teens. Yeah. So that's kind of like the feel that this game is going for. I know a lot of more people outside of that age range are going to age range are going to play it, but that's sort of the, yeah. the ideal um, market for this particular game. Yeah. Again, I, again, I brought in an age specific type of copy mm -hmm. where you're dealing with a, a younger crowd, not, not a too much younger crowd. Although when my kids were young, something like Splatoon would have fascinated them. <laughs> and then dad would have ended up playing it more than they did but <laughs> i could see it going two different ways if i didn't know the age i could see possibly this could be one of those aloof scientists who's who's letting you know how it all goes and that's just the way it is and and you know i'll try and explain it on a level that you can understand it 
or I could see it being one of those fat scientists who are like, this is so cool, we've got to check this out. Look over here. There's this, they, they can use tools to spread the ink and and totally getting into it. Yeah. Of. Now, now your read came across, your, your, your initial read mm -hmm. came across really well. It's like you were telling a, ch a child, not a super young child, but a child, a story. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it was just it, it it fit with the way this this came across. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, well, so that, that's a question. Yeah, are we talking to young children? You think? Because I was sort of debating between sort of a softer voice versus maybe sort of a Joyman scientist type voice. I think it's more preteens, right? This game is. Like, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is definitely going to be like preteens to early teen. Yeah. Sort of um, one of demographic. Really, like it needs, it needs to have, it needs to have energy. Like that, that's yes. the thing. It needs to have a yeah. little bit more, uh, a little bit more excitement in the feel. Yeah. Uh, you, you start. You <laughs> actually, um, since you had not heard the instructions at the beginning, <laughs> you started out with that. Just that little. You were kind of bouncy, and which was really good. You had a good direction going in. You know, you just hadn't heard the direction that was given before you read, but <laughs> so yeah, I would say go. I said it this before the show. I said uh, a scientist officially naming something with one, two syllables is not going to happen. So it's definitely aimed <laughs> at the younger crowd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also added, and I'm yeah. still in real trouble trying to get, bring to mind a cool scientist. Those are, that just seems like an oxymoron to me. Neil deGrasse Tyson was the first <laughs> thing that popped into my head. But then when you tell me that it's aimed at younger kids, that I'm kind of stumped. Yeah. Well, we'll see this, this, <laughs> this type of copy brings to mind a character that I actually have. Uh, you know, if I slap on the blue wig and the German accent, you got him. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm just going German too on this one. It definitely uh -huh. seems to List, I have a I have a stock scientist I use so I'll try, I'll try him. I don't know what happens. Go yeah, for it. Mine was so no high energy, uh, aimed towards. Well, I wouldn't necessarily level. say I wouldn't necessarily say high energy because that would probably push you a little too far. Yeah. Um, definitely more energy, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's high energy. But but it's it's humorous. But don't you yeah. think? Like yeah, yeah, whole, but yeah. Humorous, weird humorous doesn't inkling. I mean, that's got to be a little funny to a kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, Richard got a kick out of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found, I found that interesting. I still think they're weird, weird creatures, like and throw. creature. <laughs> the weird wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where I'm looking at this as being the, as they call it, the tweeners um, that are not quite teenage. They're still yeah. kind of want to revert back and see some of the kitty stuff, but they don't want to tell anybody about it because they're still not wanting to yet grow up until they become a teenager. Well, yeah, my, my point of reference is um, um, when uh, my youngest was a little bit younger, when she started getting close to her teens, she still enjoyed Club Penguin. So, yep. I still my, play my, I, yeah, my oldest granddaughter was the same way. It was like, well, I play this at home once in a while, but I don't tell my friends about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, my oldest kids had talked her out of liking Elmo when she was very young, but uh, there was some stuff she's like, no, I'm going to enjoy this in spite of the fact that my, my, my older siblings are trying to tell me not to. <laughs> you know? <laughs> You know, your kids are changing when your son comes across the road singing about setting Barney on fire. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Barney from a tree. Uh -huh. uh, that was so, my nieces. So yeah, that's, that's it. It's, it's just that, that, that preteen in between, you know, uh, mostly that crowd. And, and I mean, even though, yes, older people play these games, I mean, um, and well, also sort of it, it. I mean, that sort of feel, that sort of preteen feel, just fits with the world of Splatoon in general. 
Yeah. Like if, if you go ahead and Google, like if you're in front of your computer, you just Google Splatoon and, you know, click on images, you'll see it's really cartoony. The colors are really vibrant. It's really, uh, it's definitely geared yes. more towards that younger feel. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to, if you want a uh, sort of visual reference to what you'll be uh, talking over, do that. If you're in front of something that you can actually Google with, uh, go ahead and, and check out Splatoon. Like, just look it up, look at images, see what it's all about. I may go on my Switch and buy this game later. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I have actually seen seen the demos for this game uh, on my Nintendo Switch. So, so. Does it play on the 3DS? It unfortunately does oh, not. It's to arrive under the name Splatoon Legends. I wonder if it ever made it there. So well, that's that's <laughs> the whole gist of this wonderful thing. And I say we get into uh, applying whatever character we have decided to add to this as our cool scientist character. Okay. I guess I go first, huh? Yes. Yes, you do. Okay. <laughs> I keep saying that. I keep on clicking and putting little text things all over my screen. That's not helping me. <clears throat> also, I think it's fine. Ah, hello. Hello. Excuse me. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a human life. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis, the octopus, or in this case, octarians. What octopi will do? It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the inklings to take back a zap fish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zap fish. Definitely a lot of energy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It, it, the, the, the tone of Golda's voice would definitely reach the much younger crowd. You know, just, just because of, uh, of the pitch that she uses. And the accent worked. Mm -hmm. and yes. She, yes. She also came across like uh, caring, like she cared about these things. So... Yeah, I was trying to play someone who is, I know I'm supposed to be proper and I'm a scientist and we have the proper names, but this is just so cool. <laughs> and I just That's can't help exactly myself, how it came across. myself back and, and be very professional. And it just I think it came across that you were excited about the subject matter, the people that you were, whatever the, the group age was that you were talking to. If you're excited about it with energy, it's going to come across and they're going to find it interesting. And I thought that's kind of the way it came out. I thought that was pretty good. Yeah, that's the biggest thing about something like this is holding that short attention span, you know, is, is, is grabbing their attention and saying, oh, you definitely want to check this out. <laughs> that way it's not like, <sighs> I'm going to get bored with this game real fast, aren't I? <laughs> I want to play Zelda. <laughs> Michael, you're thinking. Yes, I'm always is, thinking. He is thinking. You, you what am I not have something to give me as feedback. <laughs> something, is, something is there. Something he saw. Something he heard. Well, it seemed like it, during parts of it, you were focusing too much on the accent. 
I think if you're going to do it, just, you know, the, the, the comedic accent would just be to throw it in every once in a while. Like, don't really focus on it too much. Focus more on the story you're trying to tell. Okay. Because this, uh, this particular story, I mean, what you're saying here flows in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that flow was really interrupted at certain places. Okay. So, um, of course, it's, it's, you know, I can't really point out specifics right now because, you know, um, but yeah, it, it just, just to me, it seemed like you were, uh, you were focusing a little bit too much on that accent and not quite as much on the story itself being told. Also at the very end with how long it took to get through each word really also broke that flow. Okay. And remember, yeah. we're getting rid of the T in captain. It's just cap'n. Cap'n. Yeah. Yeah. Captain. Right, captain. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's the thing with with with, uh, with the accent thing. And uh -huh. now that now that Michael mentioned it, okay, like when you're doing something, uh, especially specifically cartoony uh -huh. or, or animated like this, um, it's not something where and 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 I, I'm a stickler about this. Like, if I'm doing an impression, I want it to sound as spot on as I can possibly make it sound. I want to know people that I want people to think that they're hearing a particular person when I'm doing my impression. Uh -huh. But, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be so perfectly spot on. Okay. You know, because that's where you get fixated. And if you get fixated on trying to make it as spot on, then, uh -huh. then, then you miss really inhabiting a character. Yeah. You know, and if it's you're inhabiting that character, be, <laughs> and is in particular kids of a certain age range they're not looking for for i want a believable german <laughs> a believable german they're they're like i want to get excited about this game you got to make me excited about this game okay you know that's that's their interest right there is not not so much looking for your spot on german but looking for a a, a, a fun character to get involved with as okay. they're playing the game that's good Anything else? Yeah, so if, 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 it doesn't, if it doesn't flow to you naturally, don't force okay. it. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, just bounce it around and have fun with it. Take it from the top. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> ah, how long there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While well, we have officially named this breed this of squid the inkling, they prefer to just call them squids. Like most common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair card like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish, one stolen by the o Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish, stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Yeah, that definitely felt much yeah, better. Yeah, that, yeah. That was a lot cleaner, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, a much it was cleaner read. It was a much... Well, you read it this time, so... Yeah, you, you, were spending, you were spending far less time trying to analyze every, every word that you were speaking. Uh -huh. you know? And I understand that. I mean, you know, you, you've been dealing with learning these various dialects, accents, and yeah. all of that. And... Yeah. and um, and this is one of those places where it's like, okay, I've got to take everything I've learned and just kind of set it aside and just yeah. use pieces of it, but not, you know, overanalyze every word that I'm speaking yeah. because I'm not trying to get a native speaker to believe me. Yeah. 
I mean, really, the process that Eliza talks about is you get the accent, you play with it, you speak with it, and then you mm. stop thinking about it yeah. and just act. Yeah. And, and yeah. You let your subconscious do it. Because if you sit there trying to analyze it, you end up in your left brain and you need to be in your mm -hmm. right brain. And I have wa I've watched my over analytical brain uh, make sessions go way longer than they should go. <laughs> it's oh. like this session should have been 30 minutes. It's been an hour and a half because my brain got in the way. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, so, so this is good for me to see, oh, stop it. Just do it or don't. Yeah, exactly, exactly. exactly. Uh, one other thing is, is um, being really clear on what the story is here. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, being really clear on, on what you're trying to say, on, on what's going on, because um, you, you can't like, since this is for, since this is a story being told to like, you know, that, that sort of preteen audience, or at least with that preteen feel, Mm -hmm. You have to be able to stick with that story to keep them interested yeah. in what's going on. Mm -hmm. So um, one particular point that just stuck out to me with this last read is mm -hmm. when we're down at the bottom with the, uh, where it says science tells us the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus. Uh -huh. Well, um, all of us read that really, uh, really, how do I put it? Academically, just, you know, uh -huh. science tells us, you know, they're just kind of, going yeah. for it, whatever. But um, who's the character? A researcher at the Squid Research Lab, right? Yeah. And if the, sci and if the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus and oh, you are a squid sure. researcher, what's the story there? Maybe. You're not going to like the octopus. You're not going to like the octopus. Oh, and then so that's, the that's, that's sort of the idea of getting of getting down like what the story is so you can actually yeah. really pull people into it. Cool. So um Can I read that? You know, or in this case the character. Yeah. Yeah, you almost have that science tells us that Squid's natural nemesis is the octopus. Mm -hmm. Dun dun dun. Well, maybe <laughs> maybe that could be a little bit more generic, but in this case, the Octarians. Yeah. You know? yeah. Science tells yeah. us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But mm -hmm. octopi will do. You know, like have a little, you know, I don't like these guys aside yeah. to it. Yeah. Give it that story. Yeah. Okay. Can I start with for some reason or start at the top? Yeah, I'll take it from the top one more time. Okay. This will be your third read. Okay. Ah, oops, hang on. Can you just let the dog come in? I don't mind if you guys hear me. Yes, yes, Sorry. Yes. They shut the door and my dog was like, but, but the mom's in there. Pretty dog. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present the research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with the egg. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance a bit, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in our combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one captain cuttlefish has ordered the Inglings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Fantastic. Lovely. Yeah, each one of her reads got better. That was <laughs> that was really well done. It was a great change in expression when she said Octarians. <laughs> <laughs>
She even like, lowered, even lowered her face and furrowed her brow. The Octarians. <laughs> nice. Well then, Dan. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to do this one right here. Maybe. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Hey, howdy. How you doing? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful as it's our job to present research on the ecological curi <clears throat> as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can it <laughs> that gum it. My mouth is doing weird stuff with me. <clears throat> ah howdy. How you doing? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's extra device, they may just take back that zapfish. Yeah, that southern accent's not going to work, is it? <laughs> well, the southern well, accent can work. It's just the way that you inflect yeah. the accent. Yeah. Because, again, it seemed like you were more focused on, on sticking to the accent than telling the story. And I think that's, that's going to be the biggest killer here in this script. Yeah. Yeah, that's my natural accent, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fine. I mean, that's again, like I said, the accent isn't the problem. Like it's telling the story. Yeah, like it just sounded reading. like you were reading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it, it, yeah I could hear that. That it was is very staccato. Very, um, you know. Yeah, they were, they were um, long pa for for the, the, what I caught. I'm sorry, I had to step away. But um, yeah, there were long pauses in between what you said. There were. Um, the various different points that were missing. There were things that were said at different energy levels and it just, it was kind of, kind of all over the place. Yeah, I'm not doing that one again. It just, it, well, it I mean, it, the it, thing is, is the thing is, again, it's the, the voice is not the problem. I think you were just focused because what, what it sounds like from, from what I'm getting from you specifically is uh, you generally try to keep that accent like sublimated. You generally try to stick with like a neutral accent when you speak and going back into that accent, though technically it's your natural accent still requires some concentration from you because I don't know, maybe you've been trying to sublimate it for a long time. I don't know exactly. I'm not going to presume to know. That That's at least what, that well, so it seems like that focus was more, was placed more on you getting into the accent rather than saying what's going on in the script rather than telling the actual story. Okay. I, I actually think I am going to drop the accent, though, if I can. <laughs> Once I get into it, it's a little bit difficult. Well, that's fine. Again, you can stick with the accent. You just got to make sure that you, um, you tell the story of what's going on in the background. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Anything else? How's it for me? It actually makes sense because it, it it did seem like I was reading for a minute. That's why I was like, yeah, that that's probably not going to work yeah. because uh, I'm just reading. Yeah. Well, what happened is analytical Dan took over instead of the actor Dan. Yeah. That's, <laughs> and, that's and with this, you have to be actor Dan. And, you know, it's like, actor okay, Dan doesn't have an accent. So. <laughs> I've already done all the copy analysis. I don't need to be analyzing it. I need to be performing. And that's where it's like, okay, analysis, it's there. Let's perform. All right. Hey. Howdy. <clears throat> How you doing? Hmm. That's too. S <laughs> I'm. I'm gonna <laughs> drop the accent. I'm gonna. Go, I'm just gonna. Do, I'm gonna do something different. Ah. 
Hello there. How are you doing? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful. As it's our job to present research on the local... Mm. No, nope, that's not going to work either. <laughs> here, just go ahead and give it a, give it a, give it a neutral read. Just, okay. just go for it. Just read it. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the inklings... Mm. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With... With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. How did that feel to you? It felt like a cleaner read. It, it, it sounded like a cleaner read. It, it definitely did. You sounded way more comfortable. You know, you had a couple stumbles, picked up, kept going. And the thing of it is, is I think for you, the, the ca character in this script, it actually comes from your natural read. Without, you know, trying to layer on anything, you know, superficial or extra. And just, just being me without the accent. Just yeah. basically like my normal act, my yeah. voice. Yeah. 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 Think of, uh, have you ever seen The Emperor's New Groove? Yes. Remember Crunk? Yes, Crunk. Yeah, Crunk. <laughs> yeah. Patrick Warburton. <laughs> well, Patrick cool. Warburton is Patrick Warburton. He's just having fun there. Yeah. yeah, like he didn't need to change his voice. He didn't need to alter anything, and it worked perfectly. It was beautiful. Yes. So, Crunk. yeah, um, a character comes from your frame of mind, not from your voice. Exactly, exactly. Which is exactly what we're touching on tonight. Is is that frame of mind? What what? How how you can produce that character from you? You know, and, and your reads were a perfect example of that because yeah, again the previous reads you were overthinking it a little bit by focusing too much on the way your voice is going to sound or you know any number of factors whatever the case may be but um Look with this last read <laughs> you know, with the last with this last read you got out of your own head and just did it yeah and it was perfect yeah. yeah the thing with doing an animated style read is it's not always what you think it is no you know and sometimes, yeah, I mean, there's, there's one of those things where it's like uh, they want, you know, they want somebody to come across, you know, in particular like this or, you know, um, doing one of those way over the top kind of things. Oh, hello there. How are you? Yeah, that sort of thing, which, you know, that might work for you. I say he one? tries one read like that. Just, just not now, now, now. Just take it like you're taking your natural read. But if you already have something in there, use what you've got. All right. Oh, I had to take a drink for that one. Oh, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In their squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover earth with it. While we have officially named this breed of, <clears throat> while we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer just to call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and Color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. 
Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zap fish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish expert advice, they may just take back that zap fish. It still came. I, I caught myself doing what Michael was talking about earlier. <laughs> you caught yourself overthinking it, huh? Yep. So just I stopped. <laughs> just a little bit. Your character sounded comfortable. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I was particularly, was looking at a particular character in my head from a, uh, a, a certain Disney cartoon that I watched not too long ago. I created that character <laughs> last week on the mic check. <laughs> I was thinking that. Mr. Haney from Green Acres. I was thinking you were going to sell that squid to Oliver Wendell Douglas. <laughs> you see, that's the thing. You know? like hey. If there's something you already, there. if there's something you already have in your back pocket, and you you have become comfortable with it, you can bring it in, bring it into what you're working on. You know, because that will offer options to whoever you happen to be auditioning for. Oh no! I was I was actually I took the whole week, but since last week I took the whole week and uh mm -hmm. made out like a little backstory for this little lady. <laughs> there you go. There and, 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 and see that's see that's you what happens have, when you create a character. You can you do this character have, uh, anywhere. <laughs> you almost have Dana Dana's uh, granny from Squidbillies. What's the window? <laughs> You're close. She's more like this. Ah, help me. She's a little bit more like. Frail and but you're in the you're in that range you're in that definite gra granny country range it's a cool character well thank you i th i think i like it a little bit excellent <laughs> excellent all right yeah. uh i believe i, I picked shane next if, if that's if, if my memory serves me right yeah yeah i've got a list in front of me tonight okay shane take it away yeah. Pulling up the copy here. Sorry. No worries. Uh, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form. Oh, wait. They didn't capitalize that while. I, I missed that. Sorry. <laughs> Let me take that. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zap fish. I said, a little heard a little element of nasality, nutty professor style. That was kind of <laughs> what I, uh, <laughs> Professor Frank. Yeah, that, that was really my only point of reference. That's that's. <laughs> all i could come up with I'm curious how uh, how you did your nasality did you do it internally like you know just kind of pulling up at the back of your nose or did you like hold your nose a more kind of roof of roof of my mouth okay roof of your mouth like this. yeah a little bit of nose album almost sounds like <laughs> <laughs> See, in general, I, I was actually really surprised with how well you stuck with the story this time around. Because the first one was just mostly reading, but this one actually felt like you were talking about these creatures, like there was an actual story going on with it. And that was good. 
Shane's been in the background yeah. practicing. I yeah. said, well, yeah, I, I, and I, it was all I could do to keep from from morphing into the f- full blown nutty professor. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to do that. That might actually. Well, be yeah, I, I, I'd yeah. love to hear a read where you just go full out with it. Hey, this is cartoony. Take it as far as you want to go. Actually, take it farther than you want to go because <laughs> they can only need to come back. <laughs> All right, well, I'll give another shot. <laughs> Just Go bear in mind, it. it's for kids, so. <laughs> yeah. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we've officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But an octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zap fish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> yes, he got the role right there. <laughs> yes, that made me laugh. I think that was perfect. Being a major Jerry Lewis fan, I salute you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. A little on the loud side, but other than that, the character was great. Mm-hmm. Who was that? Jane disagrees. Uh, that was my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Alert on my phone. Yeah. <laughs> phone that was your agent calling you. They want to give you the job. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> we heard you just now. Oh, my God. <laughs> For some reason, Mike's phone is uh, uh, transmitting information across the Internet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am. You don't know the tricks I have up my sleeve. There are so <laughs> many agents on my sleeve. <laughs> hey, nothing to my sleeve. Because I don't have yeah. one. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, no, I, I like that you just got yourself lost in that character. Like, that was, that was wonderful. That was just brilliant. Wow. Well, that's the uh, thing is, <laughs> when you get <laughs> lost like, in the character... Silence after I did the first read kind of made me nervous. <laughs> well, see, well, there was get, nothing to say I, I was about, about it. Be eviscerated. When you get lost in a character, that's really when you hold on to the character the most because mm-hmm. you are you are right there where that character is. The foam disappears, the four walls disappears, the microphone disappears, and you are in that scene. You know, I mean, what was it? Uh, oh, who was it I was listening to an interview with? They said he said that they had to show him his driver's license when he would get done performing. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was that like was doing one, huh? The guy who played Yakko Warner. Uh, uh, actually, actually, it was uh, um, the guy who played Cow and Cow and Chicken. Oh, that's right. Okay, yeah, I knew it was one of them. Richard, uh, not Richard Hovitz. It's. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I can't believe I don't remember his name right now. It's I don't not know why. It's, it's it's someone. Yeah, we know. But yeah, it's, it's fantastic it's actor. We well, I'll remember you after the mic check is over. Like, oh yeah, it was <laughs> good old what's his name. <laughs> good old what's his name. Well, Shane had two great reads. Do we want to give him a fun one? Yes. You got another character, Shane? Oh wow! I, 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 crazy I, mentioned, I, I mentioned. But again, it's 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 not really, it's not really age appropriate for talking to kids. I mean, they, are kids going to know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure they will nowadays. Yeah. Um, 
Probably. Most kids nowadays are into meme culture, uh, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson is definitely yeah. a figure. Okay. And and I think they've shown him on uh, one or two Disney Disney shows. Uh, yeah, he's they, they'll know <laughs> they'll know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is. Okay. Well, I was thinking like almost like a. And even if they don't, it doesn't matter as long as you get lost in the character. That's all. That yeah, like like yeah. a like a Billy D. Williams explain this to you over a Colt forty five. You know, that you <laughs> that like, do it. Go for it. That. All right, best Lando Calrissian. <laughs> ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids, like more common squids. They can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zap fish. Yeah, yeah, that was a good read too. Great I, job, I, you I, old I, pirate. Yeah. <laughs> telling uh, this to stormtroopers. <laughs> I guess my only comment is I feel like the second read had just a touch more energy. Yeah. It might be a little yeah, more kid yeah. friendly. Mm hmm. Yeah, that second read would be the one, the kind of read that they would use for this. The third read is they could also go with uh, humor via juxtaposition or humor yeah. via opposites and go yeah, with a more straight too. read. You know, that's that's a possibility too. Yeah. It's really impossible to tell. Like that's this is this is one reason why I, I I will encourage absolutely everyone to work with coaches rather than just take all of the information from here because yeah. Um, Voiceover is so, so, so subjective. Mm -hmm. And many, many coaches out there are um, much more in tune with the general tastes of um, that subjective nature yeah. of voiceover. So while we could easily say that that first read, you know, uh, that, um, you know, where, where Shane got really, really lost in the character could be an absolutely perfect read for this. Maybe somebody who's a buyer might not like it. Maybe yeah. they want a slight tweak to it. Maybe it could be right on the money. I don't know exactly. I've actually seen that happen. When I did the parrot that I did, um, I did him with all the, <laughs> you know, all the whistling and all of that. And they came back and said, okay, we want him to be more, more human-like. Less of the squawking and whistling. Give us, give us Gilbert Gottfried from Aladdin, basically. Uh, yeah. Not quite, because okay. they still wanted a parrot type of sound. Where it's like this, ah, oh, hello there. How are you? You know, because uh, you know, I'm like looking at a, a butterfly cocoon. What's inside? You know? And then, of course, saying my name, Robbie, you know, that sort of thing. And uh, so, so they wanted it to be still more uh, a parrot, but less of the squawking and whistling kind of thing. And, 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 you know, they did ask for a lot of laughter in parrot style and, and that sort of thing. But just <laughs> in parrot style. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it is possible. But yeah, again, that, that's why... The, this the the that's the reason why I say it's always good to work with a coach and it's really yeah. important too because they have their finger on the pulse of specifically yeah. Yeah. what most buyers are looking for. Um, I loved those last two takes. I could see how both of them could work. And if I was the one doing the casting, I actually think I might give the, uh, the your your final take the more Neil deGrasse Tyson sort of straight man read 
uh, and give that a try, see how that fit in there. You know, because it, it would be juxtaposing with all these colors and high action and, and weird looking characters and things like that. And I, I don't know, I think, it'd be, uh, I think it'd be an attention getter, personally. The ability but, to wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and without seeing a picture of the character, that always helps, too, to, to know yeah. what the heck he looks like. <clears throat> I I've don't want found to. that makes it easier. I don't want to. I don't want to look at most of the time. A lot of times, like if you're doing animation, you're going to get uh, uh, some kind of representation of what that character is going to look like, you know, um, whether it be, you know, an animal or uh, some other human character or um, in the case of one audition, I did a monkey. <laughs> so well, yeah, you'd, you'd be given a character side, like when we had yeah. Everett Oliver on, how he uh, sent us those yeah, scripts that actually had the uh, yeah. illustration of the character, a little bit about their personality, a little bit about their background, just mm. so you can you know, really try to inhabit that same mind space, or headspace, mind space, whatever. Yeah. Um, They're both yeah. in the so, same yeah. general area. Yeah. <laughs> this, though, this is, this is it's very much so commercial. This is very much so a commercial because yeah. you're not playing any character who's specifically in the game. As far as I know, I haven't actually played Splatoon, so I don't know if the cool scientist character is actually in there. But um, yeah, this is this is most definitely a commercial script. So being as um, I don't remember now. being as how do I want to put it. Um, as engaging as explainery, explainery, storytelling. Yeah, storytelling, storytelling mostly. Tell. Yes. Yeah, being as storytelling as possible is going to be the most important part of what you do with the script. Yeah, because this is going to draw in the gamer, especially the younger crowd. That you know, because um, if you think about it, Splatoon is competing with Breath of the Wild. <laughs> you know well the way i see it, if this is the commercial the way i see it is it's aiming towards the kids and the parents because the kids are going to have fun with it. the parents are going to see that they're actually learning something yeah because or, it i mean so you're aiming at both for the commercial but if you're aim, if you're if you're going for just the character i i actually think this is more for the preteens yeah well, anyway, why don't we go ahead and move on? Richard. Oh, I believe that's me. All right. I'll try this while I was thinking first, and then I may do a, a different read. Ah, hello there. How are you? Oh, we here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can drive into the and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Kettlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Kettlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Okay, I'm done now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first thing I noticed... You sped up the second two paragraphs. The first paragraph and the third paragraph were all one character, and then it seemed like the middle two paragraphs, they were a lot faster. I don't know. If, if I'm the only one that heard that, it might have been my latency. Uh, I may very well have read faster. Correctly. The character started to loosen up just a little bit and, and slide away just a touch toward the end. You know, you were holding on pretty good. But, but – 
he started to he started to lose it just a little bit because I mean I was hearing that strong Peter Laurie coming out, and then um, when you got down toward the end, and and you changed your emotion, yeah, that's where it started to drop off. Yeah, well, there was a lot to read, and I think I was uh, I have a tendency to do that regular read is I have to remind myself slow down. Yeah. Yeah, and on the mo- and emotion changes, I know that's like it's like okay. When I'm changing emotion, I'm not me changing emotion. I'm character changing emotion. So it's like in this case, uh, I'm Peter Laurie, and I'm changing emotion. So it's he, but octopi will do. You know, octopus or in this case, octarians, but octopi will do. You know, some you know, kind of slide off into Ren and Stimpy there somewhere. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you do to my octopi? <laughs> I don't think the character went away as much as I was just reading too fast and it doesn't give you the the feel of the character anymore. It it pulled a little bit away from the thickness of the character because you had, I mean, he was big right there at the beginning. And then he sped up and you you still had the character, but it was like he was trying to rush, you were trying to rush through it. And then you get down to the bottom and you slowed down and you lost the character. Is that about right? Nate, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah, because as he was rushing through it, just kind of, yeah, it, it pulled him a little bit more back into Richard, and he right. stopped thinking Peter. And then I tried to slow back down again, and yeah. it, <laughs> and yeah, I it, down, it's, it's, it's funny I because down. it's funny because the delivery and the energy were still there, but the actual accent was gone by the end of it. <laughs> It was uh, Richard doing a funny voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. Which, again, could work. I mean, wh- whatever, is, whatever is most comfortable for you to stay in. It could if I would concentrate on what I'm trying to do. You shouldn't have to be concentrating, though. Yeah, no. That's right. No, it's, <laughs> it's reading. No, in the words, in that when it gets to be a big paragraph, I want to get through it quick. Mm, yeah. My patience goes away. <laughs> Well, be patient. We've we've got a lot of time, and you know if we go over, no biggie. This is are the mic chat. Mine, you, you know, I, <laughs> I wonder what your character would be like. Less accent, but that same energy. Because he had great energy and intonation on that read, and I, I'm not positive the the accent was fully necessary. I could be wrong. No, I, I, and that's fact, what I, I think I'll read it uh, I actually, as, as me and do it that way. Okay. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Yeah, you should give that a try. Good, good analogy, Alan. Thanks. Okay, here we go. Okay. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. Now, for some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish, stolen by the Octarians, while Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, with Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. That was awesome. That was the best. That was a really, really, yes. really that good was, read. Yes, fantastic. I, I had to walk away because I was watching your facial movements, and I was like, nope. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah that, was, that was great. That was great. Yeah. You focused I mean, a lot I less I on, 
the accent, you focused a lot less on the character and more on what was going on, but you still had that same, that same energy all the way through. It was, it was just, it was good. Yeah. It, was a, it was an overall really good read. And trying to remember, you're talking to some young kids who have the attention span yeah. of a gnat. Yeah, so you got to be a little <laughs> quick on the draw. Yeah. I, I literally fi- pictured the guy that played the, uh, kid, the, the kid's grandfather on uh, uh, Rugrats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Back in the 90s. I think his name was yeah. Stu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, Lou Pickles, that was it. Lou Pickles, yeah. Lou Pickles. yeah. Yeah, and, and that Lou Pickles kind of thing going on, and he's reading a story to his grandchildren. <laughs> you know, it was really good. Oh, well, thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Sometimes I try to overdo, and it's just best yeah. to be and, and see, yeah, really they, is- you know, the grandchildren are going to go running around thinking that there's squids and octopuses all over the house, and <laughs> you know. <laughs> ah, ah. Tommy, the, the thing's got me. <laughs> the twins are like, oh, Tommy, it's just another freaking party. <laughs> All right. Well, you get, what, one more read, right? So. Well, I, mean, I, I, I don't I'm, know. I'm good. I'm, I'm fine with what was. <laughs> I'm dandy with that. I'm going to, as the old saying goes, quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> 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 if this was a recording, he'd be like already sending it off to his, okay, I'm done yeah. here. <laughs> Cut and done. All right, it's going on. So I believe yeah, I, Alan was next. Yeah, Alan was next. Thanks, guys. I appreciate that. Okay. Let's see how this comes out. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, We prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a sapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Nice use of the zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I like that's, seeing the zone one read. I just that's don't the first zone one read think. Yeah, I don't think that that would, that would really work for this script. This is definitely a zone two or zone three read. He kept the energy, though. I, was, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, was, mm-hmm. I, I could hear that all the way through. He kept that, that nice well, energy up there. Well, the thing is, is, is I, I noticed throughout the, the middle section over here, uh, in particular, the squid can transform to a humanoid and uh, down to about uh, combat situations. Uh, Alan, you, you threw emphases um, – unnecessarily in places like you really hit things hard at certain points that mm-hmm. I don't think really needed to be. Okay. Like I, don't, I don't think it added to the storytelling. Okay. Um, if you're going to hit stuff hard, uh, it should be things that, uh, that are definitely differentiated. Like um, this particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid in squid form. They can dive into and become one with their ink while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. Yeah, he did it on the the third paragraph as well. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the um, the the emphases need to be put in very specific places, or it just it doesn't sound right. Okay. So, um, I would say be very careful where you're placing emphases. You can still tell a story with you know, obviously you are going to need to emphasize uh, points here or there, but they need to be placed in the right places. They need to make sense in the story. Okay. So that, that's, that's my one big thing. Also, go ahead and back off 
make this his own two read. Let there be a little bit more volume. That's totally fine. Okay, so zone two, watch the emphasis, but the energy, the direction of the character, generally okay? Yeah, generally oh, yeah. that was in a good direction. Yeah, <clears throat> that was that was an excellent character. It just yeah. sound natural. Okay, let me see what I can do with this. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. All right, can, I, then can I stop you right there real quick? Yes. This is where, this is where you're, you're starting to assign emphases in weird, place, in weird places. You uh, emphasize ecological and fascinating. Um, I think curiosities and squid creature just just move those slightly over would be a better place to emphasize. Did did anybody else catch that? Did you did you all hear the the emphasis on um, ecological and fascinating? Yeah, uh, I heard it. But sometimes, depending on the character I'm doing, the emphasis is on the wrong syllable. <laughs> Some characters I, I mean, intentionally hit the wrong the, the different words than than I would hit normally. I would have done curiosities and fascinating, honestly. And that's, I think that's how I actually did read it was ecological curiosities, this fascinating squid creature. I think. Okay. Yeah. Curiosities and fascinating would be, would be good places to put them, but yeah, go ahead, give it another try and put the emphasis on curiosities and fascinating and just go for it all the way through. Okay. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin cone and eye color. For some reason though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems like one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. All right. I think generally a much better read this time around. Yeah. What did everybody else think? Yeah, that was I a much better read. It was, uh, it was I thought there was a little less energy there. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, that would be. I think that would be my one change that I would yeah. also encourage is a little bit more yeah. energy. And by energy, I mean importance. I think I, I wouldn't necessarily say that too much more speed is necessary. More of uh, importance. Yeah, although I, I, I guess I feel like the in the first read, even though it had some flaws, I, I, I got in. It got into my head a little bit more. Yeah, and I, I didn't want you to change it too much from that. There were just various minor tweaks that I would um, uh, that I that I would have liked to hear. I, I'd like you to keep that same sort of feeling that you had for that first read, but go ahead, move it back, allow yourself to be more, you know, a, a little bit louder, and um, just try to stick with the the actual story of the script itself. Okay. Yeah, uh, maybe not louder than that, but. Uh, how about more enthusiasm about the subject matter? You're just excited about this subject matter. And if doing that, that will give you the energy I think that you need. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> ah, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid, squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools and cover turf with it.
While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they could alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems like one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the Actarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they, must, they may just take back that zapfish. All right, what did everybody think? Yeah, I think the, uh, uh, the enthusiasm, the excitement came up. Uh, I don't think we had too much outside of what maybe needed to be emphasized. I thought it was probably the best one of the three. Mm -hmm. I would agree. Okay. I Golf clap. Agree. Bravo. Yes. Golf clap. <laughs> Excellent. Well, hey. <laughs> Good feedback. So, Dan, what did you want to say? Oh, no, no. My, my internet's doing weird stuff right now. Oh, okay. I agree, okay. I agree with... Uh, Richard's assessment. The, the third read was definitely better. Um, minor things, but it might have been my connection. Okay. I don't know, Michael. Wait, I don't know if you heard anything. Um, no, it might have been the connection. Yeah, because it sounded like there was spread out to me. So. Yeah, it was, it was definitely the connection. That was connection related. Yeah. When am I going next? Uh, let's see. Where are you on the list? Why is... Oh, crap. After Alan, yes. Yeah, you, you were after me. <laughs> okay. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the Inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. And scene. Nice job with the British scientist. <laughs> I, I, I have, that was absolutely great, except for it didn't sound like you were actually amazed for the, uh, for some reason. It sounded like you were just stating a fact. It didn't sound like, you know, you know what I mean? Okay. A little it's bit more, a little bit more surprise. Yeah. A little bit, okay. Yeah. yeah a little, a little more, more uh, it, yeah. Enthusiasm uh, in that nah, particular, that wasn't the right I mean, word. it becomes wow or, or <laughs> I thought you might've sped up just a tad on that third paragraph too. He did. did he? Yeah. Anybody else catch okay. it? was kind of going along and <laughs> you did what I do. And That's I the only reason I noticed it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I Got do it. that all the time when I get a big paragraph. Throughout. Got it. <laughs> anything else? Any, any, any other particular notes or anything like that? No? Okay. All right. So let me try to add more curiosity on that for some reason, though. Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink, while in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the Inkling, we prefer to just call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. 
For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. Yeah, it's much more engagement with the story. I like that. Yeah, that that yes. is much yeah, better. better. It was it again still was a little faster on the the middle two paragraphs, but it it actually made sense for the character you were doing. I'm sorry, yeah, say it, again. It was a little bit faster on the middle two paragraphs, but it actually made sense for the way you were playing your character for the okay. character that sounded like you were trying to portray. And yeah, I mean, it's like okay, you've got your excitement. And then you've got your information and then you got more excitement. And that actually made sense for that particular, the way you were actually reading it. Okay. I, Cause I actually really tried to keep an even tone throughout or an even speed throughout. And, and I, 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 I think you did pretty well. That, that last paragraph does lend itself though, to being, uh, Oh, this is all going to be happening. This war and this is going on. They've stole that. And you kind of builds to a little bit of a crescendo. And I thought it worked great. That, that's what I was saying. It, it worked yeah. actually, it worked perfectly for that character. Yeah. Okay. All right. So acting choices were a go. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Bravissimo. Another golf crap. <laughs> you want to do um, it? Do you want to do another fun character? Or are you, you good with just I want to do another fun character. Do I even have another fun character? <laughs> <laughs> hmm, am I a fun person? Hmm. Uh, Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> no, in reality, I'm pretty boring. No, um, hmm. yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not coming up with anything. And I think, for the inter in the interest of time, I think it'd be good to go ahead and move on. Actually, yeah. All right, Joe. Alrighty then. It's my turn, right? <laughs> yes. It's your turn, Joe. Okay. I'll take it. Uh... Ah, hello there. How are you? We here at the Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can, in fact, transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the Inkling, we prefer to call them squids. Like the more common squid, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Cap'n Cuttlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a Zapfish stolen by the Octarians. With Cap'n Cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that Zapfish. Fantastic, Grandpa. That was awesome. <laughs> I really like that. <laughs> the reason why I said Grandpa is, is there's a, uh, a show, it's up on Amazon Prime right now called The Insectables. And there's this old guy called Grandpa on there. Uh, I don't know if you played him or not. But <laughs> no, no. Uh, this, is, this is based on an actual scientist, Julius Sumner Miller, who ran a program <laughs> called Why Is It So? And he was insane. He would just come and hey, let me show you this. I'm going to rub this cat on this blackboard. Does something happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I could actually hear the quote, the you doing the finger quotes for Inkling. Oh, I did, I did the finger quotes. <laughs> nice. You did well. Uh, Inhabited Patton. the character, told the story. That was that was fun. 
Uh, Captain Cuttlefish. You said Captain. <laughs> yeah, Captain, right? Captain. 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 Oh, Papa Captain Cuttlefish. <laughs> <laughs> now that's gonna be stuck in my head. <laughs> cool, Captain. Yeah, it's Captain. Ah, uh, Captain. Hey, Cap. Captain. Captain. Hey, Captain. Can I get a beer? Arr, Captain. We begin the right meeting. Nobody's done a pirate yet. Oh, hi. <laughs> hey, it, Joe. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Here's your next challenge. Go for it. <laughs> Looks like Michael is thinking again. No, I'm, I'm trying to actually see if I can find this, this particular, um... Nathan still needs to go, right? <laughs> hmm. Michael's searching. He's doing that thing that we yeah, all do when we right. get an audition, and they say, it needs to sound like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's pretty good practice, but anyway, why don't we go ahead and move on? Uh, okay. Nathan, last but certainly yes. not least. Take it home. Oh, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid can in fact transform into a humanoid. In squid form? They can dive into and become one with their ink. While in humanoid form, well, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. While we have officially named this breed of squid the inkling, we prefer just to call them squids. Like more common squids, they alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. For some reason, though, the hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. Science tells us that the squid's natural nemesis is the octopus, or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one cotton cuttlefish has altered the inklings to take back the zapfish stolen by the octarians. With cotton cuttlefish's expert advice, they may just take back that zapfish. My, my I loved it when you gave all the uh, sex advice back in the 80s on Lifetime. You were a I was going to place you as a, an old uh, Jim Carrey, or not Jim Carrey, uh, Jim, uh, uh, the guy who used to play Ernest. Uh, oh, Jim, Jim Varney. Yeah. Barney. Jim Barney. Jim Barney. He He's one of my heroes. <laughs> you, you, were, you were a tie-in for Dr. Otto. He, he had a German character with a hand dot growing out of the back of his head. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. One of my other influences outside of Harry Anderson and Robin Williams. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got a little McDuck out of that. I kind of liked it. Yeah. Well, see, there's a little bit of I I I I listen to a lot of of that sort of thing, and um, it's the uh, I have I created this character based off of that the that particular character you're talking about, which is not McDuck. It's, no, uh, it's not it. Professor Ludwig van Drake. There you it go. Was originally yeah. voiced by Paul Fries. Yeah. yeah <laughs> and uh, I started playing around with this character a long time ago. <laughs> and then uh, I slapped on the blue wig, the wireframe glasses, and came up with uh, my own version of that character. And so I just kind of tapped back into that to create that. Now Michael is thinking. I, I think <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm still, I'm still he's, looking. He's well, still well, looking. <laughs> okay, there was there was. He's the starting problem. YouTube. I, actually got, I came back late because I had to run out for a second. You're, you're exactly. Nathan, you're, you're definitely a, a perfect example of when you're in motion, the character is alive, right? Because yes. you, yes. you are moving and being with it. It's, it's like you said, with the guy who had his hands behind his back while he was reading. Yeah. You could 
you could hear it in the performance. If you're not doing something, it's, it does, it comes out flat. Yeah. It, it literally does. It deadens the performance. Cause if I'm reading like this, ah, hello, sir. how are you? It's like, you can feel how stiff I am and which this actually hurts my arms. So <laughs> <laughs> I have to be in motion. <laughs> Well, I mean, when I, when I, when I did the, the, the parrot character that I did, I actually was in here. So the parrot character was supposed to be flying and calling out to a dog. Hey, doggy, 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 doggy. Hey, dog. So I'm in here flapping my arms the whole time. <laughs> I'm watching the animatic and, and I'm ADRing alongside with the animatic, flapping my arms as if I was that bird flying. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I had a lot less space to flap my arms in at the time because my booth was a little smaller, but I was able to do it. <laughs> so I'm like trying not to smack the walls while I'm doing it. That's when you fold your arms in. Yeah. This is why I love having all this space because when I'm going to get loose, I can really get loose in here. I can practically run around in circles. <laughs> yeah, the moving thing is part of why as this room slowly, slowly evolves into a studio, um, I decided instead of just creating a small box that would be the studio, I yeah. would just treat the room and like put a curtain to make it a little bit of a smaller room. Yeah. Also, give yourself room to play. So I can yes. do this and not go smack. Yes. Oh my hand. It's like, you need to hop. What? <laughs> I'll hit my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. For my next read, somebody suggested doing a pirate. Ah, yes. Why not? <laughs> oh, there. Ah, oh, hello there. How are you? We here at Squid Research Lab are doing wonderful, as it's our job to present research on the ecological curiosities of this fascinating squid creature. This particular squid, in fact, can transform into a humanoid. In squid form, they can dive into and become one with their ink. That's pretty fascinating, if you ask me. Well, in humanoid form, they can utilize various tools to cover turf with it. And they'll protect that turf, too. Well, we have officially named this breed of squid the Inkling. We prefer just to call them squids. Like more common squids, they can alter their appearance at will, including skin tone and eye color. Especially if they've only got one eye. For some reason, though, their hair-like tentacles seem to change color automatically in combat situations. So if somebody's shooting at them, they blend in. Science tells us that this squid's natural nemesis is the octopus. Or in this case, the octarians. But octopi will do. It seems that one Captain Cuddlefish has ordered the Inklings to take back a zapfish stolen by the octarians. With Captain Cuddlefish's expert advice, they may just take back the zapfish. Well, I'll write it to you. <laughs> it was a fun read. I wouldn't necessarily say that it fits quite all that well with what's going on. Not really. <laughs> fun read. <laughs> anyway, though, looks like we're actually ending off at a decent time. Yes. 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 How about that? It is now the end of the mic check. But hey, guys, it may be the end of this mic check, but you can catch us on YouTube. You can catch us online. And we are on Twitter. Yes. V A U underscore Mike underscore. No, it's, check. It's, um, it, right? It's, no, at, uh, it's at the underscore Mike underscore check. Okay. There we go. That's what it is. <laughs> the underscore Mike underscore check. I'm still coming out of being a pirate. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where's my driver's license? I don't know who I am. <laughs> anyway, this is the close of the mic check. But, hey, you can find us on Twitter. Find us on YouTube. We have a great group on Facebook that is ever-growing. And we are always, always here. And come on back and join us. This is the kind of fun we have all the time. It's great. And you don't want to miss it. See you guys next week.